historical tradition of the Bible, we, as we read scriptures, we see how God moved through the dispensation of time, through history. We see how God moved with human beings. And the reason for God moving with human beings is because that man is incapable of directing his own steps. But not only because of that, God designed and created man to worship him and to honor him. There is an essence or a spirit a part of God that is within us and it reflects God's nature and deity. Some people call it ghost or spirit. The Bible better refer, um, refers to it as our soul. Our soul. And I was thinking between yesterday and this morning of how man is a God because God has given man the freedom to choose, the freedom to decide for themselves on the path in which they want to take, the freedom to make preparation, the freedom to think and to decide or to act upon the plan in which we have made. And so God given, has given us this freedom. Though we are a part of him and we are from him, God has given us this right so that we'll be able to reason with ourselves and understand the gravity or the measure in which we are related to him. Not by pushing us our forceful will, but we will come to an understanding of the burden, or better yet, the responsibility that we have to honor and glorify God knowing that God is our Father and He is our Maker. In Matthew chapter 5, and many people will know Matthew chapter 5 as the Beatitudes. It is quoted over and over again, but I'm not here to read the Beatitudes. I'm here to read uh, from verse 14 when Jesus mentioned something to them mentioned something to the Jews and when he came he came to the Jews the Jews were God's chosen nation through which Christ would come to redeem the world from their sin so here he's speaking to the Jews and he's saying, because of relationship, because of, I have chosen you, he said, in verse 14, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. The reason, the reason for our relationship this morning, the reason God has chosen us and made us his own, he's saying that he's using us as a vessel of light a vessel that is going to give light into a dark place 
and the place in which we live in this world, it is very dark. It is very dark. You don't have to look far enough. It is very dark. You know, human trafficking and sex trafficking and all the, these things that are happening and war. I, I used to break down when I hear wars. I used to break down. And I'm asking God why, and I realize it is not the why, it is the nature. It's the nature of what human has taken on to fight against each other because of an ideology. <coughs> it could be that they want to become <coughs> so powerful more than the other, and they fight. And as a result, of this fighting, it, it, it is a dark picture in the world. But here God said that we are the light of the world. And if you, are, if you and I are light, we cannot hide our light. That it needs to be seen on the hilltop. <clears throat> it needs to be seen wherever we walk, where we work, where we drive, God is saying, this light needs to be shone <coughs> so that others will see and glorify me. No, glorify God who is heaven, in, who is in heaven. You see, there are many people who are shining light, but their light is attracting a glory that is to themselves. Their light is attracting a glory that they want to seek power and be powerful and rule over human beings. Their light is attractive to uh, some form of slavery and holding someone down or destroying someone's name or life. But this light that God is telling us to shine is to give not ourselves the glory, but to give God the what? The glory. A woman was caught in adultery. You remember this story in John chapter 8. And she was caught in adultery. And they accosted her. They didn't accost the man. And for some reason, I don't know why. But they accosted her. And they wanted to stone her by the custom, the custom as how the custom used to be. And Jesus somehow was there, and Jesus said, those who are without sin cast the forest stone. You know the man said that stooped down, and he stooped down and he started to ride in the mud or in the sand or in the dirt. It is said that he was writing down the sins of all those who were accusing him. Now, don't quote me. That's not a part of the Bible. It is said. <clears throat> but when he stood up, they fled and they left. Jesus answered, Where are thy accuser? And she replied, They left. Jesus said, Neither do I accuse you, go your way and sin no more. But verse 12, Jesus said something. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Do you see that in your Bible? I am the light of this world. So as we are shining our light, our light is not a reflection of our will, but our light is as a reflection of what Christ has done in our lives. And when we understand that God, Christ is that reflection, when we understand that God is the one who is helping us to get from earth to heaven, he's helping us to navigate the treachery of life, he's helping us to, 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 to leave the, the things that are blinding our eyes, 
then God gets the what? The glory. God gets the what? The honor. God gets all of the praise so that we are not puffed up with pride and power and trample on our own fellow human beings. Ephesian text said it is not of work that any should boast. But it is what God has done to us and for us. Brethren, this light, let's turn to John chapter 2. I'm sorry, 1 John chapter 2. That as we journey on this earth, it is God who is directing 1 John 2, our own step. <coughs> First John chapter, did I say First John chapter 2? Um, go to First John chapter 1. First John chapter 1 verse 4. And these things we write to you that your joy may be full. This is the message which we have heard from him and declare to you that God is light. And in him there is no darkness at all. That is why we have to go to the true divine source. That is pure, it is not defiled, cannot be corrupted by any human invention, cannot be compromised, and that is why when we are the light and we are shining to the world, God gets the honor because if we are the one doing the things that are being done through us, then we will corrupt this light. <coughs> this is the message which we have heard from him Verse 5, I am declared to you that God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him, and we walk in darkness, we lie, and we and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light, as is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ is son cleansing us from all sin. I understand, brethren and friends, that God... <coughs> is the light of us all. Go to chapter 2 and verse 1. My little children, these things I write to you so that you may not sin. And if anyone sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous, and he himself is the propitiation for our sins, and not for our sins only, but also for the whole world. Now, you remember when I talk about this word propitiation? This word is also used in um, Romans chapter 3, and I think verse 23, 22 and 23. In the Old Testament, um, there, was a, there was a piece of furniture on the Ark of the Covenant, I think it's in Leviticus chapter 16, there was a piece of furniture on the Ark of the Covenant with the cherubim. And each year, they will make what you call um, sacrifices using turtle do turtles and animals and also <laughs> for their sins. It's called atonement. Some people call it at one minute, you know, being aligning with Christ. They are atoning for their sin. And this same piece of furniture, um, <clears throat> acts as a propitiation when they offer bulls and goats and offer it as an offering for their sins. But here it's saying, who is the propitiation? <clears throat> who is the propitiation? Christ is the what? The propitiation for our sins. Christ is the one who redeems us. He is the light of us. And that is why we don't do the offering of bulls and goats anymore. Because Christ, who is the spotless lamb, died once and for all. So I'm saying to you, 
I know life can become very hard at times. But continue to shine your light. Continue to shine your light in this what? Dark world. It is through you Christ is saving the world. Continue to shine your light. Whether it be true giving of helping someone to have a meal to go to their bed at night. Continue to shine your light. Even though somebody wronged you and wanted to destroy your life a couple of years or ten years ago, continue to shine your light. Forgive them and if they ask you for water, give them the drink of water. Sometimes it hurts, but continue to shine your light. You may ask God, why in my age I am being affected by illnesses and all kinds of disease. Continue to shine your what? Your light. Because it is in your weakness you are going to find strength. Continue to shine your light. You don't get your good compensation or wages that you should get from your workplace. As a Christian, continue to shine your what? Your light. Life may give you a blow. You may be going through a divorce situation. You may be going through a breakup. Or you may be going through a, a practical situation. Continue to shine your what? Your light, because you are the light of the world. Understand, it is God gets the honor and he gets the glory. Continue to shine your light in a confusing situation. You have been in a situation and you are asking God why. You cannot see the answer. You don't understand why you are going through it. Like it's like a Job situation. Job didn't know why he was being afflicted. Huh? You don't understand the situation that you are in. You are confused. You are baffled. You want answers and you can't get it. You are asking God why, but there is no answer to the why. All you are saying, you are seeing you, you are seeing an answer. Because as human beings, you know we need it is either yes or no. We never look at the answer as seen pending. Have you ever? We are always looking for what? Yes or what? No, but we don't see the answer of pending or not yet. Huh? We don't see the answer of wait. <coughs> huh? Is it our what? Yes or no, we are creatures of that kind of system. But I say, even if we do not get an answer, God is saying, continue to shine your light. Your light. When you shine your light, brethren and friends, God is converting the world, God is changing circumstances, People that do you wrong and you do good unto them, God is changing the way how they reflect on situation. And the Bible said you're heaping up coal of fire, meaning they would not think if they consider you to be an enemy that your enemy, their enemy would be feeding them. But what God is doing is changing their heart and changing the way how they behave and the way how they think. Continue to shine your light. If you are not a Christian, <clears throat> only God can shine and clean your life in a dark place. Give you a better understanding and revoke your decision of sin. If you are not a Christian, only God can cleanse you. He said, come unto me that all who are heavy laden and all those who are burdened and I will give you rest. And 
Mark 16 and verse 16 said, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. In Acts chapter 17, he said, Tell everybody to repent everywhere on this earth. And in order for us to be saved, according to the Ethiopian Union, we must confess that Jesus Christ is indeed the Son of God. I don't know what you are wrestling with this morning. I may understand that we are going through all kinds of things. We don't know what tomorrow holds or the future holds. <coughs> But I say that any situation we find ourselves in, I hope and pray that our light will shine and we will not hide it under a bushel. And when we shine our light, our Heavenly Father who is in heaven will be honored and he will be glorified. Thank you.